It was last no August when Juliet Kayyem launched her campaign for governor. She's in a contest with four other Democrats. The moment of truth arrives this coming weekend when the party has its nominating convention in Worcester. As you, I assume you know, to qualify for the primary, candidates will need to win 15 percent of the delegates. This week will determine whether they close the sale or close their campaigns. I'm joined by Juliet Kayyem. She, uh, before bidding for governor, she held Homeland Security posts for both President Obama and Deval Patrick, taught at Harvard, and was an op-ed columnist for the Boston Globe. Good to see you, Juliet. Good to see you. So Thank you're elected, you. you win the primary, you're elected governor day one. What do you do on day one as governor to make a statement to the people about what's at the top of your priority list? What do you do? Well, I, I continue the conversation that would have actually gotten someone like me to the governor's office. What's that? Uh, I, I think it has to involve growth in the budget. It's just period. There's just no other way uh, I can deliver what I want to deliver as governor until I take a serious look at the budget. What do I have? Where do I want money to, uh, to go? And about growth for the state. That's you investments. Say growth in the budget or growth, no, growth and no, the budget? Oh, making budget. the state grow in terms of its oh, economy. See. Investments in people, investments in infrastructure, and then begin to talk about things that Democrats are not talking enough about. Criminal justice reform, climate change adaptation. Uh, I'm optimistic about the future of the state. It makes me excited to be governor uh, because the challenges we have really are about complex problem solving and engaging everyone in the state. If it's you were elected time. governor shortly after you uh, uh, take office, yes. something you support will uh, happen. There'll be a casino open in Massachusetts. The poll came out today saying yeah. a plurality, not a majority, yeah. 47 to 37 percent, the public supports repeal of the casino law. That's assuming they get right. the chance to vote come uh, November, and obviously that's a function of what the state's highest court right. decides. Why are you on the other side of this issue? Why would you vote against repeal of the law? Well, I'm not on the other side of the issue. I think it's actually a, a good debate for the state to have. That is why I am for having uh, the ballot initiative go forward. I have looked at but the law. But you're going to vote no. You're going to vote no uh, on as repeal. A, on a personal level. I understand. But I, why? Be, uh, because as a governor, uh, I inherit a budget uh, that envisions uh, uh, the casino revenue. It not envisions, it's utilizing the casino revenue. I am the candidate who is going to not, I, I can't make promises I can't deliver on. How do I replace that $100 million, $150 million for our community colleges, uh, for our kids, uh, for investments in infrastructure? When I can do that, then let's have the conversation. But anyone who promises you, oh, on day one, I'm going to do this. We Democrats have to be serious about planning, about providing a, a state government that's, that's effective uh, and that delivers services effectively. Are and I can't do that on day one. And I don't worry, I mean, polling, I mean, obviously I don't worry about polling because, uh, look, I want the people to decide. As governor, obviously, if they vote it down, I will adapt. And what do you do? How do you find that hundred million? You said I, you I have to be. Exist well, without. this is what where you have to be honest as a governor. What? I don't know if I can find it on day one. Okay, so are you concerned? Step back from casinos yeah. for a second. Casinos, if they uh, stay in place, right. are on top of the most per capita spending right. gambling on yes. the lottery of any state right. in America by far. Do you worry about I a do. culture in a state? that is so dependent, five billion on the lottery, the vast majority of which disproportionately comes yeah. no, from low income people and goes disproportionately right. to wealthier communities. I, on top of that, casinos. That is an adequate, an okay way to fund a Julia well, okay. Kayyem government? Well, okay, I mean, what we have to do as leaders and as a governor is to be honest about what are the alternatives. Am I okay with it? Absolutely not. I'm not okay with a lot of things. And what I try to do as someone who has managed big agencies, big problems, is you try to move forward in an honest and realistic manner. So let me tell you about the casinos. It's not an easy issue for Democrats. Uh, I want the people to vote. And I disagree with the attorney general on this. As importantly, the legislation, as I have often said, is the toughest legislation in the nation as regards casinos. We cap out at three. We have a commission that is We don't cap out at three if Native well, Americans want. Well, uh, we could have three there, Jim, plus a Native there. American casino plus a slots parlor. But, but Jim, we're not, the Native Americans not covered by the legislation. The legislation that is going to be voted on caps at three, uh, uh, has a commission, and has community engagement. That is why in a vote is important for it. How but do you I feel mean, about this, this idea that there's a 
perfect and a not perfect. I mean, this is what gets people sort of annoyed with politicians, that they can just sort of say these things as if, and I'm pretty honest about the tactics that have to be utilized and the planning that has to be done by any governor who is going to take over on day one and inherit a budget and also, almost within the first 90 days, plan for a new budget. Uh, the, the current governor was on my radio show about two or three weeks ago, and we were talking about this same issue, yeah. and he uh, offered that he's not crazy about government by referendum. Yeah. Yeah. Passing and repealing laws on the ballot. How do you feel about that? I, I think so, he has. A, I mean, I think he has a point. I think this issue is one. I mean, first of all, we have a referendum process, so I don't know why we're fighting it. I mean, the, you know, we have laws that allow for referendums if you have enough signatures. If it's, uh, if would it we can be, be voted better off on. if we didn't? No, I don't think so. I think that I think for the most part, we're not always running to referendums. We're not a state like that, and and I feel comfortable where we are in terms of the requirements. I mean, there there are issues that. Uh, as you said, people are split, and we should have a conversation about it. I've looked at the law. I don't quite get why uh, this issue should not be before the people, even if I disagree with where the polling may show. Got it. That's just being honest. Let's go back to traditional lawmaking and Beacon yes. Hill for a couple things. Uh, Speaker DeLeo introduced a bill uh, for further gun control yeah. in Massachusetts. What, one, how do you feel about it without going into colossal right. detail? And two, how do you feel about the whole notion of states spending time tightening their laws when a neighboring state right. has weak laws? So you just drive right. north and you buy the gun yeah. that you can't buy here. Well, so, so Homeland Security, as I've often said to you, is about risk reduction and protecting our communities. Uh, and I will never uh, let the perfect be enemy of the good. Our speaker, who has been... Uh, who has not pushed for comprehensive gun control legislation has a deal on the table. As governor, I'm going to give a big smile to that and try to move it forward, even though I'm not in love with every detail, because obviously I would like the one a month purchase rules and some other mm -hmm. uh, uh, provisions. But it's a start. We are a state that has not moved on gun control legislation since Newtown, since, I mean, for, for decades. It's, it's time. And I think what DeLeo has done uh, uh, should be commended. Uh, and we can nitpick on the corners, and that's what democracy is about. But let's move forward. The fact that other states are not there yet uh, means that we are going to have to also commit to public safety controls between the uh, uh, enforcement between the two states. Uh, but uh, we will we need to be ahead of New Hampshire and Vermont and other states on this issue, even if they they're not doing what we I want them to. I have one more Beacon Hill question mm -hmm. for you. But since you mentioned your homeland security background, right. very briefly, did the president do the right thing uh, in the trade of five uh, Taliban? people from uh, Guantanamo for uh, uh, Bergdahl? So I've learned as a candidate and as potentially the governor, I really sometimes don't have an opinion about everything. I don't know if I followed it enough. Do you I've not been, have it or just not share it? I mean, I, no, I just actually don't okay, have fine. it. I mean, I think it's complicated. There's probably details uh, in it. I've been in those situations where things are much murkier uh, and, uh, and it probably okay. beho behooves no one for me to have Fine. Let's go to something I'm sure you do have an opinion on. There's a trial that no one is paying attention to, uh -oh. which is hugely important. Okay. Probation department yes. corruption yes. Uh, trial. Uh, and the whole notion, for those who aren't paying attention, which is almost everybody, unfortunately, is hiring recommendations right. made by legislators uh, who control the budget of the probation department, then the head of the probation department hired these people. Uh, there's no question it smells. The issue is, is it right. illegal? Stepping aside, when you hear that people like the Senate president, Terry Murray, recommend that a person who was considered, quote, thoroughly unqualified right. by a judge who interviewed him, uh, uh, was a heroin user and two years later was fired for heroin possession as a potential future governor. Right. What's your reaction to her and all the others that made these kinds of recommendations? So I want to separate uh, the normal, and I really do mean this normal because I've been in leadership positions where a former intern will come up and you will say, absolutely, right? So those are the normal recommendations and you anticipate I mean, you've written them before. There's ways to write recommendations in which it's clear you're sort of enthusiastic this was the son for a recommender. Of, uh, yes. The associate. So, uh, on these issues, though, where someone is clearly not qualified and then has all the issues afterwards, it's 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 outrageous uh, because it puts pressure on a system uh, that. Uh, needs to be pristine and why does it this is what everyone's forgetting about the trial that you think no one's watching because I am watching I it, hope I'm wrong is I'm that it's, it, this is this is an agency 
that's about criminal justice. I mean, if we actually want to say to people, this is a system that is going to work for your communities, because you know I'm big on criminal justice reform. It's where I differ from the attorney general. I mean, if you want to be, you know, we put generations of men, mostly minority men, away uh, on crimes that are far less than, uh, than a lot of crimes we see where others do not go to jail. Our criminal justice system and probation and parole are part of it have to be uh, pristine. And look, I mean, you can obviously I'm an outsider. I have support uh, from Beacon Hill. Uh, uh, but, you know, one of the benefits of me not being a creature of Beacon Hill, uh, but also knowing government, having worked for two presidents and this governor is, I know how to get government to work. Uh, but uh, I'm not a I'm not a sort of creature of a of a system. We have 30 seconds left. You have to be a creature of Worcester on Saturday, or I'm you're so going to have excited. a long vacation. You yes. need 15 yes. percent. Raise your right hand. Tell me you're convinced oh, okay. you're going to make 15. Get 15 percent. We're very optimistic. I get my 15 percent. Would you tell I me if you if you my... so if you if you were worried that you weren't going to get 15 percent? Would you tell me you were worried? You would you tell us. me you were worried? I mean, we're, you know, of course I would. Listen. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I'm not, uh, uh, I don't, uh, I don't strut anything. It has, it is hard for a candidate like me. We did it through the caucuses. We built our own delegates. I have been, I've been calling all these undecideds. We feel great about Saturday. Is your campaign but talking to any a, other campaign? The conventional wisdom is, this is not your this is, no, I'm asking, just, a conventional wisdom, which I subscribe to, <laughs> is candidates like you call other candidates who might want you on the ballot. Right. Some people are going, I know you hate this, but I will right. say it anyway. Steve Grossman might want two women competing for women's votes. Do you I think Steve Grossman wants I have no me idea, but the here's the, my, my question. I don't know. My question is, is your campaign talking to any other campaign said, about the, helping to get you on I the ballot? As I said in the Boston Globe debate, I like everyone. I trust no one. I needed to build 15% on my own. We feel confident that I did it, but the most important thing is on Saturday, uh, Everyone shows their hand, uh, and uh, and we feel great about where we are. It has been exciting. It's like I, I was thinking, asking me how I feel is like asking a marathoner how they feel at mile 26.1. I feel great. I'm pretty tired. I would like to get to Saturday. And you trust no one. And I trust no one. I don't mean that generally. I just <laughs> mean it. Look, you know what the convention is like. I do. Uh, I'll okay, see you there. It was great. What's the uh, what's your website? Uh, www dot com or um, also you can find me on uh, like everyone trust no one dot com. <laughs> good luck. On, good luck on <laughs> Thank Saturday. Thank you. Tim